It's another edition of your agricultural biotechnology program, AgriBiotech, where the focus is on the significance of biotechnology to agricultural development in Nigeria. I am Lara Afolayo. Following the approval for the commercial release of the BT cotton in Nigeria, the BT cowpea is another crop in the pipeline for commercial release. On today's edition of the program, we will bring you a report on the strengths of that particular variety and what it holds for farmers who grapple with the challenge of the Maruka insect pest. Vice President of the All Farmers Association of Nigeria, Daniel Okafo, will also be speaking to me on the show on farmers' expectations from this variety. Let's now take a look at some agricultural biotechnology stories. Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta wants the country's ministries to explore possibilities of introducing the BT cotton into the country. The president, speaking at the country's Eros Day, said he has told ministries of health, agriculture and trade, as well as industry and cooperatives, to work together and come up with a quick mechanism to revive the production of cotton, including the possibility of farming the BT cotton. The BT cotton is genetically engineered with a soil-borne bacteria called Bacillus thuringiensis, or simply BT, in order to raise the fortune of the crop. Trials for the growth and introduction of the BT cotton has been ongoing in Kenya for a while, but has not been fully commercialized, as different ideologies on the safety of the GM cotton has hindered the expansion. Despite Kenya having a biotechnology policy as well as biosafety act, there has been a slow uptake of the technology, which incidentally farmers have been demanding. The BT cotton is resistant to ballworm pest and can push up farmers' production eight times from the current yields of 30,000 to 240,000 bales a year, which is much more as compared to over 70,000 bales produced in 1985 when the sector was thriving. In the 80s and 90s, Kenyan cotton industry was thriving with commercial and small-scale production, with parts of the country relying on the crop for income generation. Years of neglect and introduction of second-hand clothes led to the collapse of the country's cotton and textile industry. Ugandan scientists are accelerating their outreach to lawmakers to make them aware of improved crops like disease-resistant cassava. Cassava, a staple food for residents of eastern and northern Uganda, has been plagued by cassava brown streak virus, a devastating plant disease that destroys the starchy tuber while it is still in the ground. Cassava crop failures have led to farming and economic hardship in the afflicted areas. Scientists at the National Crop Resources Research Institutes began using the tools of modern biotechnology to breed a virus-resistant, nutritionally enhanced cassava. The project, known as Africa Veca, began in 2012 and now has products ready for commercialization. But the nation's biosafety bill, which has been stalled since it was passed by parliament a year ago, must be in place before the improved cassava can be released to farmers. Scientists have used conventional breeding methods to develop more than 20 varieties of cassava that are now being grown by farmers. But since those varieties became susceptible to cassava brown streak virus within four to five years, researchers turned to biotechnology to find a lasting solution. The Maruka resistant cowpea seeds have been fortified with the Bacillus thuringiensis gene, also known as the BT gene. This allows it to resist the pot borer or Maruka insect, which is a major threat to beans cultivation in Nigeria. This variety is presently undergoing confined field trials at the Institute of Agricultural Research of the Amadou Bilo University in Zaria, and the results have been highly impressive. Let's take a look at the strengths of this variety.
Africa accounts for 65% of the world's cowpea production. The commodity is consumed by over 200 million Africans, and this explains why it is grown on over 12.5 million hectares of land in sub-Saharan Africa. Cowpea is considered the most important food grain legume in the dry savannas of tropical Africa. It is not only rich in quality protein, but is a good source of quality fodder for livestock and provides cash income for farmers as well. But the pod borer, scientifically known as the Maruca vitrata, a major lepidopterian pest which inflicts severe damage to cowpea crops, remains a threat to yields in Nigeria. Maruca, number one, it doesn't have, there's no cowpea variety that has a natural cultivar that can resist it. You know, so some others, somehow you can manage to have some resistant varieties. But this uh, Maruca vitrata is really, let me use the word, a very stubborn pest and very hard for farmers to deal with. Farmers could lose up to between 70 and 80 percent of yields when the Maruca infestation is severe. This is the damage caused by pod soaking box. It boils into what? The pod. And this one is likely even to escape the heavy infestation of those uh, pot soaking uh, box also causing a lot of damage to cowpea pod and this one also causes, uh, reduced the yield in the farmer's field. The Africa Agricultural Technology Foundation ATF has introduced a pod borer resistant cowpea project to boost cowpea production in Nigeria and other countries in sub-Saharan Africa. So it's meant to increase the productivity of uh, beans by addressing some of the constraints that farmers encounter in the field, specifically the constraints of insect pest attack, which ravages the field. We have been able to find out the performance of this potentially new variety which will be grown by farmers. It has a yield advantage of at least double fold of what is expected with only two sprays of insecticide. Confined field trials for testing the efficacy of the Bt gene in controlling Maruca has been successfully conducted in Nigeria by the Institute of Agricultural Research at the Amadou Bile University in Zaria. Agribaltec visits the trial site to see how the crops are doing. First, we visit the glass house where the BT gene, which confers resistance to the pod, is transferred to allow for improved cowpea varieties in this nursery. And then we move to the field trial site where the genetically modified crops from the glass house nursery are planted beside the conventional ones. The scientists here say the difference between the two crops become clearer and clearer as they begin to bud. To my right is the conventional local varieties planted by farmers, which is photosensitive, meaning they don't flower until when the day length is short. So this is a disadvantage, particularly with the prevailing uh, changes in our climate. But when you look at uh, the transgenic line here, they were planted together with these the same day. This flowered, matured, and even has been harvested. So even with the elicization we experienced this year, you can see this one has escaped the elicization and there is not there are going to be any way we are going to have crop failure here. Local cowpea farmers are involved in this project. They say the experience here shows that the Maruca pest can indeed be put at bay without having to spray so much chemicals. They add that these improved cowpea varieties could reduce planting cost, increase yields as well as income. The normal one we have been growing will be having a lot of problems along the line, which especially during spraying. We spray up to eight, seven to eight times within the season. And then with the new one now that you have seen, uh, it is it's more, it's of more benefit because we have to spray less than that time. And uh, the earliness of the, the early variety, the new variety, counts a lot because between no time, it's almost due. And then you have uh, food for the family. Uh, okay. 
wani waki da aka ba mu nan muka zo muka shuka kuma mun hada shi da irin namu local da muke shukawa kuma gashi a yadda yanayin yadda muke mushi aiki baki daya gashi mun samu wani bambanci shi wannan da aka ba mu muka shuka daban ya bambanta da wanda muke shukawa it is quite interesting to see that the genetically modified variety looks exactly like the organic ones. Can you see? Can you tell me the difference? Can you see the difference? Yes, no, no, because morphologically the genes has no effect or this does not alter the morphology of the seed, the morphology of the plant also. The field trials have been carried out successfully and the crops are vested, but there is no damage to the environment as claimed in some quarters. The land here is now to be used for future confined field trials. If you look at this land, this is a confined field trial that was uh, started this trial with for almost nine years now. I look at the soil, nothing has been changed with the soil from that uh, 2009 to date. We have been planting these uh, transgenic materials and nothing changed with it, uh, in, in, in terms of the soil uh, qu quality. Scientists involved in Nigeria's Maruka-resistant cowpea project say it has been hugely satisfying. The cost of producing cowpea, for example, will come down and so cowpea will be afforded by many more people who are now finding it probably too expensive for them to, co to, to consume. So. Uh, and also the farmers who grow it, they are going to make a lot of margins of close to 25% or about 25% uh, of margin from the production. They are positive it could help resource poor farmers and enhance food and ecological security in Africa. And next on the program, Vice President of the All Farmers Association of Nigeria, Daniel Okafor, will be joining me on set to share his thoughts on the BT Kalpi variety. And joining me on the program is the Vice President of the All Farmers Association of Nigeria, Daniel Okafor. It's good to have you join me on the program. Thank you. What specific challenges are associated with cowpea that's been farming in Nigeria? Uh, uh, what we do is the old variety of cowpea. And that old cowpea, the yield is not so good. That's the main challenges of the farmers. The yield. Uh, Sometimes the, 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 the number of the uh, hectares you do, you get a little torn. And it's very, very, uh, very bad to the farmers. Farmers, is, uh, everybody is not happy on that issue. So we want a new varieties. Okay, you say the yields are poor for the farmers. So what factors are responsible for these low yields? Uh, you know, if I can tell you, it's, a, it's a, a, um, the, the science and technology, uh, like in overseas countries, there's many, many uh, universities and the colleges that do much researches. And when they do research, they go what we call high yield varieties. So, we urge our universities to do more of the research to enable the farmers to get more yield in their new varieties. I know one challenge associated with beans farming in Nigeria is the Maruka pest. That's the port borer. Yeah. I don't know how badly this has affected beans farming in Nigeria. It's a common uh, uh, disease that uh, every, fa uh, every farmer, so far you do beans, uh, the coffee, you must actually grow it. It is very, very common. In fact, it's very, very common. And you know, uh, last about 10 years ago, uh, there's uh, what the Federal Ministry of Agriculture did uh, that year. Uh, they use a helicopter to to do what we call uh, 
spread uh, insecticide in those days, mostly in Kano, Kaduna, all these areas, and Gombe, Yobe, the area that they normally do beans. And that gives uh, farmers hope that time. But now, nowadays, nothing like that. So the, the disease is still, uh, but, uh, it's, it's much this time around. The Federal Ministry of Agriculture tried to help the situation, but that didn't yield too much results. How have the farmers themselves been trying to keep this pest at bay, to control the pest? Mm, like now, they, like the farmers, they, they do whatever they you know. There are many, many ways they normally do for the pest. And the, most of the pest, you know, uh, there are some, something you cannot do without it. it is the uh, uh, local ways of uh, driving pest through the constant uh, weeding. You know, the, most of the farmers, they sometimes use weeding to scare the, this thing, the pest. But whatever you do, you need a scientific uh, 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 control, the really one that can control it very well. Because that's what is, uh, actually hinders the progress of the farmers. Farmers cannot make money with uh, their, that kind of disease being ravaging their farms. You say it hinders the progress of farmers. To what extent has the Maruka Port Borough affected the fortunes of beans farmers in Nigeria? Uh, the report that we are receiving from the, far, uh, the farmers in Zamfara, uh, Kano areas and the Yobe areas shows that they, they suffer a lot of, it's a problem. In fact, it's a challenge. The yield will not be okay. They cannot get much. Despite the one that they, they have old uh, varieties of cowpea that doesn't even give more yield, but this one even hinder it a lot. So our own, uh, what we normally say is, if there is a way out, is to have a, a new varieties that all these pests we are talking about, we run away from. You know, overseas countries like India, all these, all these places, the US and other places, they have a variety that they normally have that help the, help the farmers to have yield, more, more yield. And they also environmental, uh, okay. Talking about new varieties, have you heard about the BT cowpea? Genetically modified cowpea? Yes. What do you know about it? Uh, in fact, about six years ago, I, I went for a you know, we, we investigate what the universities and the other colleges normally do. So I'm one of the team that le le went to uh, Zaria, and we saw one professor there called uh, Ishako, who shows all the, the trial that he's doing with the farmers there in a excluded area. And we saw that with that, being our own, being that the, the researcher or the, the man Concern is in Nigeria, and he has done a lot of work. So uh, up to now, the trial is still on. Did you, did you, or any of your members? I mean, many or any of them, the members of your association, participate in that? Yes. In yes. 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 Even up to now, they are still on it. It's not yet uh, over. And what did they, they discover about that particular? They noticed that the, even the disease we are talking about. It's something to, uh, nobody can talk about disease again. The disease is, in fact, you cannot get the disease, I mean, the, 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 the very disease we are talking about is not available. The environmental care, clean, if you see the beans, it's different from the one that we are, with the way it is. So what actually happened is that we need a new, improved variety that all the disease we are talking about or incense that we are talking about that we revenge the resin should not be. So it will be a thing of fast. Okay, talking about this new variety, I know during the confined field trials, the new variety is planted, that's the genetically modified variety, yeah. is planted side by side, the conventional variety, the one that is usually attacked by the pod borer insect. Yeah. What were the major findings of your, the members of your association that participated in that 
particular field trial as regards the differences between the two of there's them. a lot of differences in the area of the yield in the area of the environmental uh, this thing, the, like the what I'm, I'm just trying to put it through is that there's no disease that uh, that is saying that is uh, 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 revenging the, 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 the this so uh, we got a lot of uh, yield from this even last time I went there, they are still doing the more he can, he can. So what we need the, as a farmer is to have improved varieties that my farmer will be rich compared to the people in Europe and the America, Canada, all the places, South Africa, India, China. The farmers are making money there. So the farmers, we should be allowed to make the same money because we need to make money. You want to make money. Let's say, for example, we? I'm you not talking as, about the only me. You as and, an association, yes. you and your members want to make yeah. money. So what are your expectations specifically from this variety? If we, let's say, see the approval for the commercial release, as we've seen it being done for cotton, what are your specific expectations? I mean, you and the members of your Farmers Association, what are your specific expectations from this? And what we, we need to do is, first of all, we multiply the, the variety and make it commercialized and make it, in fact, we are creating awareness to our local farmers on this issue. So what we need is, if it comes out, is to make a more this thing. Because what I want to tell you is that we need food in this country and we need quality food. I think that we... The national biosafety management are doing their work because even as we are moving up and down, we've seen the trial they are doing. This national uh, biosafety management is still doing their work and making sure that the whatever the quality of the of the seed doesn't uh, 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 is standard. So they are just checkmating whoever that is doing any work. In science, uh, in science and tech, uh, this, this thing. And how do you expect, let's say, for example, the commercial release of this variety to impact beans farming in Nigeria? No, you see, you see, when you talk about the quality seed to the farmers, quality seed means quality output. The yield will be very high. And a lot of people who are not eating uh, beans because of the price, we go on eating it. So far, it is a quality seed, a, a quality seed. You see many people will go into beans. Beans farming is formally, is just everybody is not, people are not happy because of all these uh, challenges we are talking about. But today, if it is released, everybody will go on to eat. We are just canvassing for it creating awareness, building capacity of our farmers. If what we need, let it be released. A lot of beans is coming from overseas, and many of it may be, may be GMO if they check. So why, sh why should we allow the grains to come from overseas? Well, as our, our professors can do it, the same thing, we must encourage the science and technology. We must encourage science and technology. What would be your final message to the Nigerian government? I mean, it's still undergoing confined field trials. It has to pass through some certain processes before it's eventually released for commercial purposes. What would be your message to those in charge of you know, granting these approvals? Uh, my message to both the government or, or the parasitals or whatever, whoever is in charge, quick release of the of the of the cowpea, the new variety. Second one is that the population of Nigeria is growing from two hundred by two thousand and um, twenty thirty we become five hundred million. So everybody should know that we need to feed half the whole Nigerians with a good quality food, beans or uh, cowpea as they call it. So, and our scientists should do their work to give us a quality research that will enable everybody 
to be free. So we actually want the government to look into it. And national biosafety management should also do their work. Nigeria needs to feed itself. Its population is growing and it needs to do something to improve on food security. Thank you very much for joining me on the program. Thank you. And that was Mr. Daniel Okafo. He is the Vice President of the All Farmers Association of Nigeria. And you heard him right. Nigeria has a food security problem and the country needs to do something urgent to feed itself and its teeming population. We'll take a quick break and the program continues shortly. Do stay with us. On feedback today, I take this email from Stephen, who sent in an email from Ogun State. Stephen is interested in castor farming and will like to have information on the special breed of castor oil seedlings. The Open Forum on Agricultural Biotechnology, OFAB, as a response to that inquiry. And at this point, we draw the curtains on today's program. Send your emails to agribaltech1 at yahoo.com. Send us tweets at agribaltech13 or post comments on the Facebook page Agribaltech on TVC. I am Lara Afolayo. It's bye for now. <laughs>